Yo, Adam here coming at you today with a review of the Samyang 24mm f2.8 AF prime lens. This one is the Sony E-mount in particular. Now, it is worth pointing out that I am a wedding videographer. As most of my subscribers will know, I primarily shoot weddings. 99% of what I will use this lens for is for shooting my weddings. So just bear in mind that any of my thoughts, opinions, or any of the features that I look at, I'm looking at them in regards to wedding videography. And I'll be kind of tailoring any opinions that I have towards towards wedding filmmaking. With all that being said, if you are looking into getting this lens or you are a wedding videographer also, I would definitely, definitely recommend it. It's a brilliant little lens. I've always used Samyang lenses for my wedding films. I have, I still use an 85mm prime cine lens from Samyang and I've up until now, I've always used a Samyang 35mm prime as well. So I'm, I'm well familiar with the Samyang range. They have a great range of primes, really affordable as well and generally great pieces of glass. Up until now, I've been using 35mm as my kind of wide option. So when I'm shooting weddings, I always shoot most of the day on an 85mm prime. I do now use a Sony just for a bit of stability. I use a Zeiss Batis lens, but I have used a Samyang 85mm in the past. That's most of my wedding day and most of my filming. But for a wide shot, I've always used a 35mm Samyang. So if I've been in a church, needed to cover a ceremony, and have a wide shot in a church or during speeches or any sort of getting little close-ups of details, I've always used a 35mm Samyang. But just recently a friend of mine was using the 24 and I've been looking at getting a 24 for a while. I was looking at the Sony 25mm f2, um, the Zeiss Batis, which is I think about 800-900 quid. Um, so I've been looking at that a 24mm just to have that extra bit of width that the 35 wasn't quite giving me um, but then when I saw my friend using the Samyang equivalent and it's the difference in price it was like 250 quid so I thought I'll I'll try that out first and if I like the focal length I can trade it in and move up to the Sony. Now I've tested this out on a wedding last week and I've got to say I don't think I'm going to bother trading it in. I'm really happy with it so far. So yeah, I, I spent the weekend using it. I used it at my wedding that I shot um, on Saturday, just gone, and I used it in place of my 35mm. And I wanted to have a play with it before I shared my thoughts on it, obviously. To skip the unboxing, it came in a standard kind of box inside the usual bits of padding document mumbo jumbo this is this is the cool bit because i took the i opened the box and this is what i was presented with this little case and i don't really know how to effectively translate how light this is uh, going from a 35 going from a 35 mil samyang lens which is it is big and it's pretty heavy to this and I was greeted, I opened the box, I was, I was greeted with this. It's, it's hard to kind of give a scale, but I, I looked at it and I thought, no, the lens can't be in here. So first impressions, I was really pleasantly surprised at how small and how light, I, I, I thought it might be quite small because I've seen pictures, but it's so light, it really, it's hard to explain how light compared to this, for me is a big deal because I try and be as lightweight and portable and discreet as I possibly can on a wedding day. Um, so that is going to be a lot less in your face than that. So as I say, this is this, the E-mount for the Sony. I shoot with Sony A7S Mark IIs. So this is the E-mount one, but I know they do version for Canon and Nikon, I guess, and da da da, but this is the Sony one. It feels like you'd want a lens too. It feels well built and robust. What I love about Samyang's is they're so affordable. I don't know how, as a company they can afford to give lenses out so cheap because it, it feels well built, it feels like a proper, and the quality of the image is good, it's sharp, it's a good piece of glass, but it's a third quarter fraction of the price of the Sony Canon equivalents. I don't know how they do it. Obviously you lose a little bit of stability that, you, that I would get if I was using a native Sony lens, but, um, and this is just a manual focus, no built-in stabilization. <sighs> but it's because it's on my B cam, it's gonna be on a tripod all the time, so that none of that matters. So in terms of the footage, here's some of the stuff that I got at this weekend's wedding. Uh, so as I say, it is my wide kind of safety shot, if you will. As soon as I turned my camera on, set it up with this lens on it, I knew 
looking in the camera this was going to be my new lens i knew it would just replace my 35 because straight away it had that extra bit of width ceremony from the back you can see you've got a nice a really nice wide shot from floor to ceiling you can see all the wooden beams in the ceiling it gave me that extra bit of picture that the 35 mil wouldn't have and i think uh, and I mean on this particular wedding it does look a bit more cinematic because you can see the whole room um, it gave me that extra bit of space I think you get from, from a 24 mil you've got a bit more of a feel of this is a wide angle shot you know you're getting more in and it just has that kind of bordering on that kind of distortion that you'd get from a really wide lens and obviously you can see all the beams from the roof and I just think it looks really nice and I was, I was impressed with it straight out of the camera looking back coming home and looking back at the footage it's sharp as I want it to be as my previous semi angs have been but that extra bit of width, I really like it as a focal length. I think it's ideal for what I want. And being able to, to shoot wide open at f2.8 as well. Locations like where this ceremony was, because it's a bit of a darker room. Um, so it lets, obviously, let in more, a bit more light in, which is good. Same for the speeches. I used it as a wide angle for the speeches and I could fit pretty much the whole room in. It, ju it just made for a nice safety shot and see all the guests kind of reacting to whatever's being said etc you get a feel for the for the atmosphere for the room um, for the scale of the venue i'm liking the 24 mil focal length as opposed to the 35 um, and also when i'm because i i use the wide angle i use this camera for shooting stills and stuff on the day as well so i'll get little snippets of the dress or shoes or table settings or any little details of the venue I will shoot as stills, as still images, and I'll interlace those into the video. And, and what you, what I found with the 24 mil over, as opposed to the 35, is that you get that extra bit. You can get that little bit more closer to the subject. You can, you can focus in from. I was literally in some cases I was about this far, and I was still able to focus in, and that gives you a really nice kind of, especially at f 2.8, like wide open. You've got a really nice distorted kind of feel. Um, a really shallow depth of field and a distorted kind of look to the image which just makes it a little bit more interesting. If you shoot it right and there's a load of distortion going on and it's kind of as an image is making you what's going on here then I can only see you know this bit's so blurry I can only see a little bit of it like it's kind of an interesting shot to the eye and it takes away from the fact that it's actually just a still image because you're too, too busy trying to process what it is and by the time you've figured it out like it moves on to the next shot and it kind of works so using a 24 mil and being able to to get right close in and focus gives it that distorted blurred kind of effect works really nice so yeah perfect perfect for what i need um but as a lens in general um you know for anyone watching this who isn't a wedding videographer or wants to use it for, for photography or you know any kind of shooting i think it's a really good lens i'm really happy with it um as i say i'm pretty much bought into the samyang range anyway um or the rokinen lens depending on what part of the world you're from but the, the samyang lenses do tend to be really good they've got a really good range of um prime lenses at different focal lengths i love the focal length of 24 being able to shoot at f 2.8 is more than wide enough as well it's it's obviously manual focus but the focus ring itself is smooth it doesn't you know it doesn't feel jagged or stiff or anything it's pretty smooth it feels quite good in the, you know when attached to the camera it feels good in the hand it's so light and small and cute really sharp image quality well built super cheap you honestly can't really fault it the only downside that it has as opposed to other lenses is there's no it's manual focus there's no built-in stability etc but you know you're saving yourself a good few hundred quid so that's the trade-off you're getting the actual image quality the sharpness of the glass it's it's perfectly fine this is going to be my new lens my new wide angle lens on my b cam so i'm now be rocking the, the 85 mil sony zeiss on one camera and this 24 mil samyang on another um, i'm actually looking forward to maybe using this for like the evening do and going handheld with it and testing the stability a little bit testing whether the stability in my sony a7s is good enough to carry this lens and i'll be able to get maybe some slow-mo kind of close-up dancing footage in an evening um, so I'm looking forward to testing that out because I think on a 24 wide angle I'll be able to get really close into the action and get some good dancing footage I'm looking forward to trying that out and yeah I would I definitely recommend it I, I really like it um, and I really like the Samyangs anyway I'm not affiliated or paid to say that in any way I just really do like the Samyang range and I think this is a great 
option if you are looking for a 24mm uh, lens. I'll leave a link for this lens in the description below if you want to check out all the specs and a bit more info and all that kind of stuff. Um, and if you've got any questions, please do leave them in the comments because I'm very aware that this is a very uncomprehensive review. I've only kind of covered it from my point of view from using it at weddings. But if you've got any more technical kind of questions that I've not covered, just drop them in the comments. I'll try and help out as best I can. I've probably missed off half the stuff I should be mentioning. But hopefully this was helpful a little bit, um, especially if you are a wedding filmmaker or wedding videographer. Subscribe for more if you feel like doing that and like the video and share it and blah, blah, blah. Um, I will be back next time with another kind of vi wedding videography related video. Thank you for continuing to support the channel and the videos. I've got some interesting, exciting, hopefully stuff coming up in the near future um, leading up to Christmas. I've got, I have got a behind the scenes at a wedding video in the pipeline. I've got a couple more interviews. I've got loads more helpful tip videos planned. So thank you as ever for the support and for tuning in and make sure you subscribe if you're not. Duh, 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 duh. See you in the next one.